So we are now 72 days removed from beginning classes way back on September 7th, following a picture-perfect morning and opening chapel service on the most magnificent boarding school lawn anywhere in New England. In the time that has passed since then, we have poured ourselves into yet another pandemic-altered mode with impressive energy, lots of spirit, and renewed appreciation for shared time on this campus. From my seat, this has felt great, and the combination of seeing all of you more clearly, enjoying your company at seated lunches, watching our school compete interscholastically on Wednesdays and Saturdays, attending our first live theater performance in over 20 months, handing out far too many $5 Frank Ashburn bills along Main Street, enjoying Chipotle with the many who completed the Chipotle challenge, and just being in one another's presence has been a thrill. We have done well. It is also true that this fall has been yet another shift, another schedule, and another speed defined and maintained. All of this adjusting that we continue to do with less clarity than we would like about what the winter and future might have in store for us takes a toll. While we have been and will continue to be engaged in our whole program and have done well at maintaining a healthy campus, my sense is that we all will benefit from the break that is now just two days away from beginning. There is no doubt in my mind that we have earned this Thanksgiving break. We are poised to begin on Saturday and then some. There are a lot of factors that have contributed to our school's ability to continue and persevere through the shifting educational landscape that has been our reality through the pandemic. Yet there is little question that we would not be on our feet and doing as well as we are without the faculty's deep engagement, care for our students, passion for subject matter, and total investment in our school. I was a full or part-time history teacher at Brooks for what are still the majority of my years here and have been around what I believe to be scores of incredible teachers and educators since arriving in 1990. Along the way, my admiration for those who share their passion for and command of subject matter in ways that take and hold in students has only grown. I always thought I would be doing well if I could just be a fraction of the many great teachers I worked with who were so much more than that, who are so much more than that today. So I'm honored this morning to have the privilege of presenting the Waldo and Ruth Holcomb faculty chair to a profoundly deserving colleague who is everything I think of when I reflect on great teaching and great work in our boarding school community. When an endowed chair becomes vacant, Mr. McVeigh and I invite the faculty to share nominations of colleagues they admire with the two of us and explain in that nomination why they believe the colleague or colleagues they are nominating are worthy of holding a chair. I think it's reasonable to suggest that there is no greater honor for a teacher than to earn and receive the thoughtful support of colleagues who know well what it takes to excel with, that, with all that is on a Brooks School faculty member's plate. Our faculty members are teachers, coaches, advisors, dormitory parents, club and affinity group leaders, and mentors of the highest order. They are both generalists and experts all at once, immersed in multi-contact relationships with students that often have them wearing all of these hats at the same time. All five of the current endowed shareholders have been this in their lives as faculty members at Brooks and elsewhere. Thus, I'd like to begin by making sure we know who they are. Lee P. Perkins. Mrs. Perkins holds the Prince Charitable Trust Chair and was appointed to the faculty in 1998. As you know, she is away from school this year. 
Deborah R. Davies. Mrs. Davies holds the Independence Foundation Chair and was appointed to the faculty in 2000. She's right over there. We could give her a round of applause. <laughs> Lillian B. Miller. Mrs. Miller holds the Richard F. Holmes Chair and was appointed to the faculty in 2006. Dean P. Charpentier. Mr. Charpentier holds the F. Fessenden Wilder Endowed Chair and was appointed to the faculty in 2008. <laughs> and Laura A. Heidekevich. Mrs. Heidekevich holds the Hope H. Van Buren Endowed Chair and was appointed to the faculty in 2011. This is the seventh occasion and ninth time I have enjoyed this privilege of presenting an endowed chair to a member of the faculty. That's once every two years over the course of my time as head of school. And in other words, these occasions are not routine and making sure that we appropriately celebrate great teaching when the opportunity knocks is important. This is one such opportunity. I know Mr. McVeigh would agree with my feeling that being privy to the ways in which colleagues make time to share what they admire about those they are nominating is both inspiring and a privilege all on its own. These decisions are never easy because there are so many worthy nominees on our faculty. This year we received nominations and support of 14 faculty members who are all exceptional who have all earned the admiration of their colleagues. That we have so many teachers who have earned this distinction from their peers speaks volumes about the strength of our school. In all likelihood, each of us have our own notions of what makes a great teacher. The school's founding headmaster, Frank Ashburn, offered the following when the school celebrated its first 50 years and shortly after his 46 year tenure ended in 1973. And I quote, I have concluded that great teachers are impossible to formulate. They may be brilliant, exciting, amusing, full of mannerisms and pedagogical devices, or they may be stern, thorough disciplinarians, characters without realizing it. Usually, if they are really great, they have a capacity for arousing intellectual curiosity, of making students want to know and learn more, of drawing from them better work than they had known they could produce. He went on to add, there are also fine school masters who, while thoroughly competent and effective in the classroom, are not brilliant pedagogues, but have careers matching those of the superb teachers. They run dormitories coach all manner of extracurricular activities, serve as counselors to students, handle multiple necessary chores that enable the life of the school to go on and are the backbone of the school's existence. With all due respect to Mr. Ashburn, I would humbly offer one more thought about what makes a great teacher. This past spring, I was working on prize day remarks for our early June ceremony and found myself drawn to a teacher I had earlier in my life who has always had a permanent place in my heart. I thought about why. What really was it about that teacher that has kept him with me all these years? Well, he was what Mr. Ashburn described great teachers and school people to be in and out of classrooms. This teacher's hold on me was much less tangible. It wasn't about his classroom, which was great, or his engagement with students outside the classroom, which was deep. It was about how he left me feeling. On top of all of this teacher's many gifts, his greatest gift was that he left no doubt in my mind that I mattered. All of us on the faculty at Brooks choose to be here. I believe we do so because we are drawn to the opportunities we have with students to help them grow, thrive, and find their way through an incredibly variable phase 
in their lives. We choose to be with all of you who are students because we want you to know in no uncertain terms and in ways that hold for the rest of your lives that you matter to us, to your peers, to your school, and to the many you will come to know and have not yet met. Great teachers leave students certain that they matter. With Mr. Ashburn's school now in its 95th year, I believe he'd be pleased to know that we have a faculty full of educators who are everything his 46 years at Brooks led him to spell out when he was reflecting on great teaching. When I think about the colleague who will soon receive the Waldo and Ruth Holcomb faculty chair, I think about how this person has been all Mr. Ashburn had in mind. I think about how this person has always leaned in and sought ways to be engaged in school life that have gone far beyond any kind of job description we probably typed up when she arrived. One colleague wrote, I am inspired by her energy and passion for teaching. I love collaborating with her on initiatives and her energy is contagious. Seeing her in the hallways brightens my day and inspires me to be and do better. I love having her as a colleague. Another colleague wrote, she spends meticulous time each year recrafting her lessons to teach her students better each and every year. I don't think there's been a single year when she's just said it worked well last year, so nothing to improve. She just strives to keep making her class better. A third colleague wrote, she is a leader in curriculum development and raises our collective departmental bar with her exceptionally creative lesson planning. I always learn when I'm in her classroom. And furthermore, I always borrow something she has done and incorporated into my own teaching. She has been a winter term star, leading and contributing to new, exciting, and mission-driven courses every year. And as this colleague added, she reaches all kinds of kids, is undeniably passionate about teaching and learning, and has the respect of her colleagues. She has encouraged her department to wear history-themed costumes for Halloween and was described by a colleague as a JV basketball coach who takes the game seriously, but not herself. And that gives girls permission to be themselves while trying their best to improve. She knows how to have fun, and one would have to work pretty hard to not have fun when in her presence. She exudes energy, spirit, and a passion for making whatever she is a part of better than it was when she found it. When I think about this peculiar boarding school world we are all a part of and contemplate what will ensure our school's durability over time, I think of this colleague. She is expert in her discipline and growing all the time. She relishes this, what this immersive life with students and colleagues offers those of us who choose to make it our life. She is engaged in doing her part to move our school in a direction that reaches the full breadth of the richly diverse community we are. In what is still just the beginning of what will surely be a distinguished career in education, she has played an integral part in scores of students knowing and feeling that they matter. She gives me hope that our school in particular and boarding schools who wish they were our equal, can grow, improve, endure, and thrive for a long time to come. And she somehow found time to successfully defend her dissertation yesterday, completing work in pursuit of her PhD. This is turning out to be quite a week. At the beginning of the year, she wrote to me sharing how much she appreciates being a part of this community. I hope that this honor underlines how much we have all drawn from her, how much she has contributed to the community we are and still hope to be. 
we are a far better community because she is a part of it. With deep admiration for what she has been and will still be herself, I'm honored on behalf of my colleagues to present the Waldo and Ruth Holcomb Faculty Chair to Dr. Amanda Julianne Nasser. So as I said, we will have a reception following chapel, and Dr. Nasser